Hi, I'm Ian Hartman, Solution Architect at Western Computer. And in this short video, we're going to focus on the landed cost module. Do you need to track purchase orders as goods move from the point that you take ownership to the final destination? Do you need to receive the goods at the overseas dock and again at the warehouse? Do you need to capture different costs along the way? Do you need to record invoices from the merchandise vendor as well as the shipper? Have you created workarounds or even written custom code to handle these challenges? Then the landed cost module might be right for you. Keep in mind that there are new tables that need to be configured and we will be taking a quick glance at some of these as well. To enable the landed cost feature, you need to go to feature management. In this case, I have actually just put a wild card in for the word landed and anchored on all. And you'll notice that the feature was added in 2020. The vendor table. So in this case, I'm using land packaging 1002 as my shipping vendor. On the miscellaneous details in voyages, there is now a drop down for a shipping company, an agent, different roles the vendor can assume that are used by the landed cost module. Warehouses have two new roles of warehouse, a good in transit warehouse and an under delivery warehouse. Both are used by the landed cost module and they're set up exactly the same way you would set up quarantine in transit. Terms of delivery has a new flag. This also is very important. Without this flag, you will not be using the landing cost module. I've created a new terms of delivery, but you can toggle this flag on for any existing terms. Posting profiles have some added functionality. Two new nodes in the purchase order side need to be configured with GL accounts for the accrual and for the goods in transit. There is a bunch of new tables for landed cost. I'm showing you a couple here. Vessels, highly recommend setting up vessels. Their shipping container types with dimensions, those are all used in calculations. And of course, the shipping containers themselves. There's automated costs, similar to miscellaneous charges that are automatic. In this case, I'm saying for that shipping company, that vendor I just showed you, for a mode of delivery of ocean, going from Shanghai to Long Beach, I want to add a fuel surcharge of 17 and a half percent. So if those conditions are met, this will automatically be placed on the voyage as a charge. Of course, there's going to be shipping ports and different legs or steps of journeys. So in this case, there's a load step, a custom step. These are the different sailing steps, which is why you'll see the numbers go from 10 to 30, because in reality, these are my 20s. And these steps have different lead times and attributes associated with them. So in this case, I'm looking at a Nimbo to China trip. That's the journey. On that journey are different legs. Within those legs, there are different roles or activities. In this case, I'm saying for the load leg that I showed on the prior screen, if I'm loading, it's a one day lead time. If however, I'm sailing, using on the waters ocean type mode of delivery from Nimbo to Dallas using this leg that we see here down at the bottom. That's a 23 day lead time. So what the system does is when I'm tracking and we're going to be seeing this, I'm going to be tracking as I enter in, these are estimated dates, anticipated dates. As I enter in the actual date, the system looks at that, for example, Nimbo to Dallas using ocean sailing, it knows it's a 23 day lead time. But when I record the actual date, it's going to recalculate the next step, in this case, step 30, to make its start date equal to the formula for the actual date, taking into account the actual end date. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the landing cost module, we're going to create a purchase order. I actually have one created. So we'll create a new voyage. We'll add it to the purchase order. I'll show you some of the background that I just talked about. We're going to take ownership of the goods while the goods are sailing. And as we're speaking to the shipping vendor, the goods are going to get delivered to the dock and we're going to take ownership of those goods. And an invoice is going to eventually come in from the merchandise vendor, even before the goods arrive stateside. So we're going to record that as well. And then we'll start adding some costs and tracking the trip. 
So this is my landing page. This is where I normally land, and I've created a new tile for landing costs. We're going to be working landed costs. We're going to be working from here. So some of the things I talked about is this on the water that I created is the terms of delivery. So here is where I've toggled this flag. Mandatory if you're going to use landed costs. You can back out of there. Warehouses, I showed you that there are two different types of brand new warehouses that are specifically set up for landed costs, goods in transit, and under delivery. I've also talked about the tracking control center and the lead times. So here's where those lead times are set up. In this case, Shanghai to Auckland, New Zealand, the ceiling, it's an 18 day lead time. I mentioned automatic costs. So on the automatic costs, I told you that if I was using this particular vendor in the vendor master, if I click on this vendor to jump into the vendor master, you'll notice in the miscellaneous details area, I was trying to show you earlier on the slide, there are different roles that a vendor can assume, agent, customs, broker, or shipping company. You'll see those in play. Get back out of there. And let's go look at the purchase order that I had set up. So here's the purchase order. It's from Banana Man Growers. It's using 40 as an ocean and on the water, which I just showed you it's set up. Close this. If we look at the landed cost, this is all on the header, by the way. I haven't shown the line yet. I've already told it the port. I never picked an agent. If I wanted to use an agent, I could. This vendor 10004, whose name is agent, is assigned the role of agent. I did, however, pick a shipping company. There are two shipping companies we talked about using 1002. And if I go look at the lines, the lines here are 10,000 pounds at 25 cents a pound. This equates to 250 boxes. There's a unit of conversion. And we're using the variant of large bananas. Now, I'm going to anchor over here on the delivery tab because you'll notice that this confirmed delivery date is blank and unavailable. As we start going through the voyage and I create the voyage, I add this purchase order to the voyage and I start working with it, Eventually, this date is going to be maintained by the tracking system in the voyage. So let's go look at what's on hand. Remember, I'm looking at large bananas. I have 10,000 units, which equates to 250 boxes. So if I come over here at my large bananas, what's currently on hand, this 250 on order, if I go to transactions, is coming from purchase order 526. This is purchase order 526. So that's it in a nutshell. If there's anything else that you want to see, I can be reached at ian.hartman at Western Computer. I hope you enjoyed this quick session of landed costs. Thank you for attending. Take care.